Hi, everybody. This is Crypto Rich working with you to get rich with crypto, filling our pockets with crypto profits. And in this video, we're going to be having an overview of what's been happening in the crypto space because there's been a few things that have been quite interesting, to say the least. Plus, also what's happening, an overview of what's happening in Cosmos, plus honing in on a particular application which will support you in making more money with the Osmos DEX. NordVPN is becoming more than just a VPN. Threat protection will guard your device against malicious websites, malware, trackers, and intrusive ads, even if you're not connected to a VPN server at the time. Step up your cybersecurity and stay safe. Ready to hop in the 6 four and cruise around the blocks? There's a storm coming to the underworld and the heat is on. Take over the blocks and call the shots. It's time to hustle or get hustled. What's it gonna be? Stay sharp. It's a dog eat dog world out there. Don't let them catch you slipping. Only real gangsters thrive in the. Hey, Chia, thank you so much for making yourself available. Hey, Rich. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. This is the second time you're on because we did a video a few weeks ago about Yield Moss, which is a way of, uh, of uh, amplifying and compounding the staking returns that are available, sorry, not the staking returns and also the farming returns that are available with Osmosis Dex. And I remember in that video, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, 20,000% return with this project. And then, and then when going through your application, it was in the, it was actually millions of percent return, ridiculous millions because of the way your application compounds the uh, rewards. Yes, indeed. Now, be before I ask you to say what Yield Moss is, everybody, please subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Crypto Rich YT, join my official Telegram announcements channel, and please do come and follow me and support me on Odyssey, bit.ly slash Crypto Rich Odyssey, because of all the censorship on YouTube. I really am just shifting all my material over to Odyssey, which is a blockchain-based blockchain -based platform. All right, Gio, do you want to say just a little bit about Yield Moss, what it is, how it works, what it does, and also your other project, Dexmos? Sure. Thanks. Um, so Yieldmos is a way for, for you to be able to grant another, you know, Yieldmos takes advantage of a technology that allows you to grant permissions that then allows Yieldmos to do very specific things on your behalf without having to take custody of your asset, without having to take ownership of your token. Because if we compare compare things to like how, how things are done sort of right now is when you like go and and like want to compound things or, or use some sort of yield generation strategy or evolved like urine or beefy whatever you're actually moving your assets from your wallet into their smart contract and then the smart contract has custody and ownership of that asset and then does things with it right versus with us you maintain the ownership you maintain custody and you just give us very specific permissions to be do to be able to do very specific things on your behalf right so like compound staking rewards or compound your osmosis lp stuff and we've got more more dexes coming out soon and whatnot so that's at a high level that's that's sort of what what you almost is and then dexmos is just like an analytics platform for the osmosis dex yes it shows you sort of more more detailed more more fine-grained um data on what the different pools are doing yes and it's and and you told me it's way more accurate or uh, useful in a way than the osmosis own analytics pool and i've used it i've used dexmos to find which pools use the best give the best returns depending upon whether I'm bonding for a day or seven days or fourteen days on a daily basis, weekly basis, or a yearly basis, which I found incredibly, incredibly useful. So thank you for that. And then your sister project, Yield Moss, and I'll have all the links in the description below. Yield Moss was something else, really, really something else. So it's a little bit like you may not know this, uh, Gio, but with YouTube, you know, with my YouTube channel, I can I'm the main. I'm the owner of the channel, but I can give permissions to other people to say to act as moderators or to act as editors or to act as managers. They don't get to delete stuff. They don't get to delete the channel. You know, they might get to interact with comments or they might get to um, edit a video or something like that. But it's limited permissions. So I have complete ownership. So the way I look at it with Yieldmos, I have complete ownership of the assets. But Yieldmos is able to go in and uh, not take anything out, not take the remove the assets, 
but to compound them again and again and again and again. And with some projects, I, I think it was, it might have been Rebus or Tory or Jacko, I can't remember on the video, but they give rewards every, like ongoingly, ongoingly, ongoingly. Every, every block, yeah. Yeah. And then with Yield Moss, every 30 minutes, those rewards are compounded instead of, say, every 24 hours or every couple of days when I get around to do it, which is why the returns are just so, can be just so ridiculously high. I think Einstein said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> and Yield Moss builds on that knowledge from Einstein. Mm -hmm. And and it's it, there's no charges. There's no charges for Dex Moss. There's no charges for Yield Moss. So it's free to you. Not yet. They may not yet. They may be at some point in the future, but right now it's free to use and uh it's not custodial. You don't get access to the private keys and stuff. And it works. No, no, we don't want we don't want private keys. No, we don't want them. Otherwise, well we'll talk about that, the risk of um giving away your private keys and counterpart a risk. We don't uh, and currently it works with osmosis.zone, which in my opinion is the best and premier DEX inside the Osmosis and the Cosmos ecosystem. And you're adding other DEXs as well. Now, just say something about, about DEXs, decentralized applications, decentralized exchanges versus centralized exchanges, because you may have heard there's been a little bit of noise in the crypto sphere and in the financial world and actually even the main news about an exchange called FTX that came into a little bit of controversy. What's What was the risk with FTX versus the risk with a decentralized exchange like Osmosis? Um, well, with the, with most of the centralized exchanges, you actually have to send them your crypto and then they manage your crypto within like an internal ledger, an internal database that they have complete control over. So one of the, one of the few things that we've sort of already found out with FTX is that they used customer funds to do whatever they wanted with them, right? It wasn't, it wasn't kept in some separate account and like managed as it should have been. They were doing things they shouldn't have been doing with those funds and sort of sort of the difference sort of a, a stark difference to that is with the dax like osmosis let's say you're you're maintaining ownership of those funds right you're adding them into a pool and then you're bonding that liquidity but throughout the entire entire process you maintain ownership you maintain rights to to some percentage of that pool right so that's yeah. that's sort of the biggest thing it doesn't mean that like dexes are risk free we've seen issues with a number of dexes in the in the ecosystem where there's been material impact but nothing on on the scale of ftx or anything in the past like this isn't this isn't the first time this has happened right back in back in uh Shortly after the Luna Terra thing, we saw Celsius A3C and Voyager have you know similar similar things for different reasons, but like same thing, right? They they took liberties with with people's people's funds that they shouldn't have taken, and like you have you know it seems to be like a reoccurring thing with centralized exchanges that like the the greed gets to them and they do things they shouldn't be doing with 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 with, uh, with people's yep. money, people's assets. Yep. Sorry, from you were talking about FTX, right? But I was thinking. Oh, he means MF Global. Oh, he means HSBC. Oh, he means any of the standard banks and what they do, right? Which is really funny because there's all this conversation. Oh, we need to bring in regulation, regulation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because HSB is fully regulated and that didn't stop them running, laundering money for Mexican drug cartels. And MF Global, they were fully regulated within a regulated industry and that didn't stop them from mixing uh, depositors' funds and then gambling on those depositors' funds. And then because they were losing, well, let's gamble some more, see if we can recover their losses. That and everything gone, everything gone from MF Global. Oh, of course, BCCI, that was fully regulated as well. I remember that because that was very big in Pakistan and, and a lot of people lost money when that, were, but they were regulated. So th the issue is, uh, isn't about regulation, which you didn't say, but I'm saying it's about ownership. Who has access to the assets, right? You know, it's like, um, I, you know, m my gold, my silver in my pocket, my Bitcoin in my pocket, I'm responsible. No counterparty risk. Mm -hmm. If I then go and entrust it to a centralized entity, whether it's a bank or um, a centralized crypto exchange or even like a gold custodian, the LBMA, I don't know if you know the the shenanigans that the LBMA and the COMEX do, right? So this is so for those of you who don't know, this is where the price for gold and silver is set. And what they do on those exchanges is they buy and sell not gold. 
they buy and sell paper gold, digital certificates that aren't backed by gold. And then what that does, it lowers the price of gold and silver against the dollar and therefore makes the dollar look strong. And FTX were doing similar, which is they had the, the Bitcoin and the ETH, but they were creating fake Bitcoin, fake ETH, fake FTT, which is their own token, in order to flood the market, depress the price. So it's not crypto. It's banksters. It's human beings. <laughs> it requires... Greed. It's, it's greed, it's right? Greed. I, it, it, it comes down to greed. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and listen, to be honest, I'm greedy. That's why I'm in crypto. I want to make money, right? <laughs> you know, I want I want to make money. I want to make a good living. I want to be able to provide for my family. That's why I work. That's why I work. I, you know, I work as a social worker, not because I, I get paid. I want to get paid. I want to make money, and I work. But as there's a, a difference. But but there's <laughs> a difference. You're you're being greedy with your own assets. Yes. Right. Versus being greedy with other people's assets. Right. Um, that's the, so. I, do you, I think there's an important distinction there. Right. Do you, okay, but how about this then? Give me your Bitcoin and your Atom, and I'll see if I can double it for you or triple it for you. Just give it to me. Yeah, let me get let me get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the, the risk of uh, centralized exchanges, the counterparty risk. You have to trust somebody else. And then uh, when that somebody else has access to millions and billions and billions of dollars, as in the case of FTX, I mean, you don't know who what who they're meeting with, what they're doing, what deals are happening in the background. And I'd like to go through some of the stuff that I've come across with regards to FTX, that the shenanigans they've been up to. But there is a risk with decentralized exchanges like Osmo sure. and like Uniswap, like JunoSwap. Do you want to say what those risks are? Sure. I think... I don't think anybody should fool themselves to think that anything is risk free, right? As the as the famous saying goes, no no risk, no return, right? Yeah. Um we we've seen we've seen some of the risks come come to fruition this year alone with with a couple of the DEXs out there where you know software bugs caused people the ability to be able to withdraw more assets than they put in. Like human beings aren't perfect. Yeah. Um there's there's mistakes that can be made there. Um I think we've seen we've seen something something like three billion dollars worth of value stolen from smart contracts. Wow! Um, since since like February of 2019 or February of 2020, I forget what the thing is, but it was something something like 100 million dollars a month of of stolen yeah. value, right? That's so, tiny compared to stolen value from centralized exchanges. I mean, I mean, it might be, but like three billion dollars is still nothing to laugh at, right? Sure. Like, sure, right? So it's like it's like the the the, the it's what I'm trying to say is the risk isn't zero yeah i just think that the risks are a little bit different right um you don't have like if you th if you like sort of like we were just talking about in the centralized model you have basically one entity one organization that has control over all of the assets and if they don't have proper controls or they're not properly regulated and even regulation we can probably argue about regulation because like enron was regulated right and they yep. still had, did a bunch of shenanigans right but like if, if like people get sufficiently greedy you're still going to have problems there, right? You're going to have you're going to have those that that sort of that those nefarious actors take over and 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 do things they shouldn't be doing, right? With with the decks, the 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 risks are different because they're more sort of software and programmatic, you know, related to more of a programming type type thing type issues, right? And then we've also seen sort of unintended uh, monetary policies also cause issues. Um, when things aren't tested properly, right? So it's not. So it's not. Say more about that. Risk free, you... just the risks are different. Unintended monetary policies. Give me an example. Or what do you mean by that? Um, there was a DEX that decided to alter most most DEXs in the ecosystem, not not the like concentrated liquidity ones, but most like balancer type DEXs have a 50-50 weight, most of them. I mean, there's exceptions, but for the most part, most pools are 50% one asset and 50% the other asset. There was a DEX in the ecosystem back in springtime decided to alter that weight with with like artificially altered those, those weights. So over time, um, the weight of their own token was like 75%-ish to like 25% of the other token, and that had unintended consequences, right? Um, that, and then there was another thing where um, 
because of the low liquidity, there were some shenanigans where someone was able to buy a token off the DEX, bring it onto the DEX, um, artificially inflate the price because of the such low, low, low liquidity, you can artificially inflate the price, add that to the pool, and then use that token to trade for another asset because it's severely inflated and then take out like Adam, oh. right? And that, and that's all just like as a result of like bad planning, I think. I, I It could be because people were being nefarious and greedy, but like, I'm just saying like the risks are different. That it's not, no one should, should like delude themselves and think there's zero risk when it comes to a DAX. Yes, yeah. And, and it's like uh, gaming the system. People will find ways to gain the system. And I think some of the risks with decentralized exchanges, so there could be bugs in the code, like what happened with Osmosis Dex, which is where, this is a really interesting one, you could add liquidity, but if you, you say, I don't know, you added $1,000 worth, and if you then removed it before you bonded it, you got more than $1,000 worth. That was, And then uh, when somebody found that, they told the, the devs. And uh, the devs did what they did and I think acted really, really quickly to to um, correct that bug. So there's bugs. There may also be on occasion, and I'm not referencing any particular DEXs, willful bugs like backdoors that the uh, developers put in. And right. Then, that's, also, that's also a risk. Absolutely. Yep. And then there may be um, bugs that result in hacks. I remember one many, many years ago with the project, which with Ethereum, with the project that Gavin Wood was in charge of. It was an Ethereum wallet, online wallet or something, right? Actually, that's not a DEX, but the, but you can have hacks. Mm -hmm. And then the other risk with DEX is I could put money in a pool with a new token and they change their policy. Like you said, like suddenly they decide to release loads of tokens all of a sudden. You know, they change their loss. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So then the price of the token goes down. The, so those sorts, those sorts of risks. So, but it's not like with a centralized exchange where I'm entrusting uh, men in suits behind closed doors, which, <laughs> which is not the point of Bitcoin, right? Right. So right. some of the stuff that I've heard, and you may or may not want to comment upon this, right? But this is me because in my channel, I do cover political issues and economic issues. So some of the stuff I've heard about uh, FTX is how SBF's brother, Sam Bankman's free brother, was involved with um, COVID PPE, had contracts to do with COVID, and they were funding really shoddy trials that showed how bad and evil ivermectin is, but they were just badly run trials. At the same time, promoting the coronavirus vaccines, which injections as I call them, um, suggestions that they may have been involved with child trafficking, there may be suggestions with child tra trafficking and also just incredibly dodgy financial practices. Apparently that no accounts, dozens and dozens and dozens of bank accounts FT FTX used using their own token, which they kept locked up, the bulk of which they kept locked up in order to inflate the price of FTT. Um, what else did they do? Oh, you work for Yieldmos, right? They're a little project, yeah? And then some a little company, and sometimes companies will give their employers loans. You know, I could go to my employer and say, hey, listen, uh, I'm a bit strapped for cash this month. Can I take a loan set against my next two months' salary? And the employer might say, okay, and we work out a deal, right? And they give me a little loan, and they take it back. Sam Bankman-Fried, he got a loan from his employer, FTX, of over $3 billion. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> what are you gonna do? What do you want to loan for three billion dollars for? And then there's the uh, his uh, palatial mansion in Bahamas, and also his parents had got a fabulous mansion in Bahamas as well, paid for out of FTX funds. And the fact that you got this was it? He's twenty nine year old, twenty nine year old <laughs> from, like that, yeah. from nowhere. Because I noticed how big they got, how quickly they they got big. Because um, I've been around in the space since 2013. Uh, Bittrex hasn't got that big. Bittrex does things properly as far as I know, right? But FTX came along and boom, so big. And then I remember the media talking about Sam Bankman Freed and what a great philanthropic, successful billionaire he was at the age of 29 or whatever. And I really, really should learn if the media say, oh, this person's absolutely wonderful, or they ignore their crimes. Uh, and this person is just the the devil incarnate, 
oh, I want to pay attention to this person. This is the one to follow. <laughs> and then and you may not be familiar with British policy, what I'm about to say, Gio, because I know you're representing cryptocurrencies. So this is an opportunity for me to vent a little political stuff, right? The media in the UK says absolutely nothing about Tony Blair's crimes. Nothing about Tony Blair's crimes. You know, the, the complete lie that resulted in the destruction of Iraq. But they go on a lot about uh, Jeremy Corbyn and what a terrible anti-Semite he, he is on no foundation, no evidence whatsoever. But he's a threat to the establishment, whereas Tony Blair is part of the establishment. Anyway, so that's the problem with centralized exchanges. And then there's the knock-on effects that it's going to have. Anything you want to say or how you think that might play out with other crypto exchanges? Yeah, you know, I, I don't. I, I, there's been stories of like different exchanges loaning each other money. So there's, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some some issues there. But also, you had you had a lot of like um, a lot of projects in the ecosystem. Not just in Cosmos, but I think across all the ecosystems that kept their treasuries on centralized exchanges, right? FTX being being one of them. And I think you know there's going to be some some issues there, right? Because those treasuries are gone, right? Yeah. Um, so that's going to cause issues. You have probably a lot of um, you know, I mean, it, the second order effects. You know, every everybody who was a customer of FTX and had assets on there they're going to feel it right some some are going to be impacted more than others but like all those other projects right that's that's going to have a toll that's that's going to cause issues and it's it's going to take take some time to figure out what what everything what all the what the entire impact is going to be yes yeah yeah a little bit like the rollout of uh was it bear stearns bear stearns collapsed and then i think six months later it was lehman brothers and then there was a whole range. There was Fannie Mae and others and others and others and others. And then we're still dealing with the knock-on effects of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what about um, Cosmos? Just changing the subject. What's happening in the Cosmos ecosystem that you want to let us know about? Um, yeah. I mean, there's been uh, a few projects that have launched recently. You know, Territory, Rebus, Jackal, uh, Stride just did their airdrop. They're going strong. Kujira keeps building. Um, Umi did a bunch of upgrades. Um, Comdex is released a bunch of new products. I mean, if if you looked at this ecosystem, I don't think you'd be able to tell that we're in the middle of a bear market, right? If you did more no. prices for a moment, right? Up to like 54 or 53 app chains already out there. Um, yeah, it's been it's a lot. A lot is happening. I think. I think the next next bull this next bull cycle is going to be very interesting. Oh yes, oh yes, and I'm I'm actually thinking because this is my second, is it my second bear market? Maybe my yeah my, my second bear market in crypto, and the first bear market as a second bear market as a vlogger. The first bear market was really rough. It was really really rough. This bear market isn't so rough for me because I've been building and building and building and building. So I can't wait for the next bull run because that'll be really, really sweet, right? So the bear market is the time to build. Now, why won't these Cosmos projects be beset by the problems that have plagued FTX? Um, I, I don't know if there's like a blanket statement, blanket answer that I could give you here, but like, I think for the most part, these projects are building products that are you know open source and so it's much easier for people to be able to verify their claims and the things that they are building right mm -hmm. um so you have you have sort of be, be, because the the ecosystem is a bit more open and a bit you know things are open source and, and people are sort of i think are checking up on each other to see what's going on the, the problems that we've see, we just saw with FTX probably probably aren't going to happen. I don't I don't know if I would say they aren't going to happen because you know greed greed is a pretty pretty powerful powerful thing. So like I would 100% expect for for some developers to try to pull a fast one, and I mm. think we've seen we've seen a little bit of that here and there. But because things are on chain and 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 whatnot, it's it's easier to track and like things I think come out quicker like i like when when fraud happens in like an open ecosystem i think it, it takes less time for it to be discovered right so we've definitely seen some of that um but overall i think the like sort of 
radical transparency that the that the ecosystem provides sort of is a dis disincentive to to um to try to try to try and defraud people because of how easy it is for people to figure out that you're doing something wrong in a way i don't know if that makes sense or not but like no i think weird, being, weird thing. no i think being open source makes a big big difference because people can check stuff out plus also i'm not saying that every single project in in cosmos ecosystem is fully decentralized but there is a ethos of decentralization that it promotes and that it's open source so people can check and the problem with ftx is that it was centralized and closed source you didn't know what was going on you gave away your bitcoin your crypto to somebody else and they did what they did behind closed doors so that's not the that's not so easy right. within the cosmos ecosystem but that but people still got to be careful and don't put it any more that you can afford to lose there are you know there are uh, shams and scams failures and frauds within this ecosystem as in any other like one of the ways is you know a, a project could launch and give away an airdrop because that's because there's no icos as far as i know well there's a few a little bit here and there right but it's growing by airdrop you just get free tokens free tokens so you and i we could spin up a whole bunch of free tokens have a website airdrop them to everybody people start trading and then we disappear having sold our tokens except like you said because it's open source people will be able to see oh my god rich and geo are selling their tokens <laughs> they're out to run for it mm -hmm. and that's and, that, and that's happened right yeah that's happened that, that's been i'm not going to name any names but that's definitely happened right yeah that does happen that's hu human beings human beings doing whatever human beings do wherever they're, they're always done they're always human they're always being human yeah. everywhere in any ecosystem okay right yeah any anything else you want to say or mention or talk about yeah i just wanted to add one i guess one thing on on top of this whole ftx thing like this isn't a problem that's unique to crypto no there's a reason why the U.S. Fed is a land lender of last resort. This the same thing happens to centralized bit to you know the centralized bankers. The those guys have various ratios they have to maintain, and during times of stress, they run out of liquidity as well. They run to the Fed asking them for for liquidity, and 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 the same thing could have happened with tulips or cars or sneakers. Um, this is not a problem that's unique to crypto. It's just, I think, more prevalent in crypto because of the lack of regulation. And for the most part, most people have been like resistant to crypto regulation. But this isn't if if regulation came out and saying that like sex, you know, um, sex is centralized exchanges have to maintain a one to one reserve. That's not regulating crypto. That's re regulating the way that centralized exchanges operate. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'd be all for I'd be all for that kind of regulation. Well, I, personally, I think the best kind of regulation is self-regulation. But a lot of people get hurt with that, though. People people will get hurt with other regulation anyway. Ultimately, if I invest, if I had invested in a regulated entity, it's still my call. It's I'm still responsible. I put my money in there, right? Sure. But if you got deceived into putting your money into there. That there's a difference there, right? Like, sure, but but I don't think I, regulation uh, will change that. It's it, not. It's not going to change it. But I think, like, if if the regulation like was sort of a mix of you know forcing exchanges to keep one to one reserves and having some sort of like transparency uh, mandate as well, it, it's probably not going to stop the fraud. But I think it would severely decrease it. Okay, then let me put it another way, right? The remedy to this. Is in decentralization. Sure, sure, absolutely. But yeah. but I don't think centralized exchanges are going to go away because people. No, they're not. There's still there's still like a massive need for um, fiat on ramps and off ramps, right? Yeah. yeah. So like until until that goes away, I don't think we're going to have the centralized exchange problem go away, or no. not not necessarily a problem, but the, the and that the fraud problem away, that going away gets nearer and nearer and nearer as a uh, as the debt default. <laughs> That day approaches when the debts can't be repaid and the whole monetary so fiat monetary system collapses, which is why I recommend not not actually not my recommendation, but something for you to consider: gold, silver, crypto. Okay, Geo, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna have the links to yieldmoss.com and also dexmoss.app. Do check them out, and also the Yieldmoss Telegram group, a small but growing Telegram group with some great conversations. Try out the Yieldmoss 
application with osmosis. I'm doing a whole series of videos on how to use the osmosis decks, and I will be doing one, another one on yield moss and how to use that to maximize your returns for staking and farming on the osmosis decks. And between now, please do subscribe, comment, like. Your comments below make a big difference. And between now and when I see you next, please keep filling your pockets with crypto profits, crypto rich, and crypto geo. Signing out. All the best. Bye bye. Thank you.